Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Stephen Mangan. Hello! A very warm welcome to the British Academy Television Craft Awards in 2019! Now, we are here to recognise and celebrate the skills of British television talent and to pay tribute to those individuals whose work stands out in an already impressive field. And it is a huge field. Absolutely massive. There is a bewildering amount of television sitting there waiting for us to watch. Every day brings an avalanche of new programmes Tons of programmes are available to watch on iPlayer, on all four, Apple TV, Now TV, ITV Player and so on. There is so much television out there, it's actually hard to get your head around it. And I should know, because I haven't got off the sofa since April of last year. <laughs> That's right, in preparation for these awards, I took the extraordinary, and some would say unnecessary, step of watching every single piece of British television that was available. I'm still buzzing. I watched groundbreaking documentaries like World's Biggest Hips, <laughs> Supernatural Nazis, Fatberg Autopsy, Secret of the Sewers. All these shows are real, by the way. I watched forensic examinations of the state of our nation, the rigorous village of the year with Penelope Keith, the extraordinary 41 dogs in a three-bed semi, and, of course, tattoo disasters, what were you inking? <laughs> As my wife and children packed their cases and I mastered the art of washing in a bucket, I tuned in as television lifted the covers on our private passions. I particularly recommend Other People's Breast Milk from Channel 4, <laughs> Sex and the Swastika, and who could forget Channel 5's Nana Love, Fifty Shades of Granny. I know I can't. But I didn't stop at documentaries once I discovered adult nappies, given the delivery driver his own key, and named each of the rats. I ploughed through children's telly, daytime telly, news and current affairs, reality, game shows, sitcoms, drama, shiny floor, and docudrama. I was there when Mr Blobby came on to Loose Women to discuss Brexit. I was there when this morning interviewed Britain's sexiest cow. I was there when Zoe Ball was announced as the new host of the Radio 2 breakfast show and the on-screen caption read, Ball Bags Breakfast. <laughs> I was there when the BBC's Evan Davis announced on the BBC's Newsnight that they had asked someone from the BBC to come on and talk about BBC pay but no one from the BBC was available to come on to the BBC. <laughs> I was there when the vowels and consonants on Countdown spelt out I bumhole. <laughs> I was there when The One Show posed the question, would you travel two hours for a battered sausage? Answer, no. <laughs> so what did I learn from my year of uninterrupted TV watching? What did I come away with? Bed sores, a vitamin D deficiency, and a string of statutory Newton disorders, yes, but also a profound and unshakable conviction we make a lot of television. <laughs> and all of it is sensational. Think of the last year, and unless you have a personal life, <laughs> all your memories will be of things you saw on the telly. England beating Colombia in a penalty shootout. Danny Dyer calling David Cameron a twat. <laughs> Colleen Nolan and Kim Woodburn maturely talking through their differences on loose women. Those were three of my favourites, but there's something out there for everyone. Want your soul stirred? Listen to the preacher at Harry and Meghan's wedding. You want to see Hugh Grant applying Vaseline to Paddington's tradesman's entrance? <laughs> We've got you covered. The TV in this country is incredible. All life is here. But, in the words of Matt Goss, <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day, but we don't have the time Rome had. 
So let's get on with it. Let's BAFTA it.